Okay, so the next tutorial is um, in Adobe Illustrator, and this is how to live trace an image. So um, sometimes when you've done a drawing, um, you want to just colour it in easily on the computer. You want can you the computer can live trace it for you. That it's that clever, and um, rather than you drawing it out again, it's a quick and simple way of getting this. Um, turned into a computerized image so I've got my sketch I've e edited this already on Adobe Photoshop with how to crop it how to um, change the contrast using levels so if you wanted to go back and do that to your image before you get to this stage you may need to go back and do that so I've got my pencil drawing normally if you were going to live trace you'd make sure that you've done it in pen but I'm just going to show you that it can actually work in pencil as long as all your lines are joined up so if you had any gaps, uh, it may not work. So here the colour might bleed out, but I think we might be okay. So the first thing you do is you collect your black arrow and you click on your outline. Um, you can see the live trace button here. If it is not here, it will be in object, live trace, and you can press make or you can go to tracing options there. Most of the time though, you will find that your live trace button is just above where your image is. Uh, and you can see it converts raster images into tracing objects. A, um, a raster image is an image that has pixels. So at the moment, this pi this is a pixelated image because we've drawn it and scanned it in, and the scanning process makes pixels. And when you trace it, it becomes more of a vector image, which means that you can make it as big or small as you want without um, it getting blurry. So just to go into the live trace panel, I am going to show you how to do it in more detail because when you do the live trace just by clicking the live trace button, uh, you may find that it doesn't work how you want it to work. Don't worry if it says this, it's just because you've got a large image. The computers that you've got should be able to handle it, although they will take a while. Just click OK and now do it. And you can see what I mean, that you get gaps in the image here and here because it's only live traced it to the default setting. So we don't want to use that. We don't want it to be like that. That's not how the final outcome should be. So I'm going to undo that and I'm going to show you how to do it in more detail. If you click this little thing here, this little arrow, you get lots more options. We're not going to go with any of those. We're going to customize it ourselves. We're going to go to tracing options and click OK. Now what you must do is make sure that you have clicked on um, preview and you can see what I'm doing I'm just moving this box out of the way as far as I can click on preview and that way you can see what's going on so at the minute this is the default setting and I don't want these default settings so I'm going to make sure these down here are two which I think is the smallest number that you can get and that will help the tracing to go as small as possible so make sure that is two as well and then also the key thing is to go to the threshold and there's a little slider in here that you can slide up and down and what you'll need to do is just slide this all the way up I'm going to go quite high to maybe 2, 3, 5 and then I will get a nice black tracing that I can use um, once I've done that, I will need to expand the tracing. So at the moment, it's still one image, but I need all of these little sections to be objects in their own right. So if I click on expand, that then becomes a whole mishmash of lots of different objects. And you can see if you click off it and then collect the white arrow, you can click an area and you can see that area now is um, just an area on its own right. All these little dots are just little excess bits that we don't really need to to have there but at the moment because they're not impacting too much on the drawing we're going to leave them there for now the next thing you need to do is collect your live paint bucket your live paint bucket is normally in this um, panel behind the shape builder tool I don't know why they've put it there it's a silly place to put it but that's how we fill the live trace so if you collect the live paint bucket just by holding down uh, keeping the click down the left click right click sorry collecting your tool that you want the live paint tool and then you need to color it in at the moment you can see that in my swatches I haven't got any colors that might happen to you um, sometimes that happens if it's a grayscale image and this was a grayscale image so I don't have any um, swatches or sometimes it just happens anyway on Adobe Photoshop 
um, Illustrator. So what you can do is go down to the swatch libraries and in there there's lots of different swatches that you can use um, for this. So I'm going to just go into colour books because that's what I've used when I was working as a graphic designer and I know that Pantone solid coated a lot of the time that's what um, printers use. So these are kind of print ready colours and you can drag out the corner and you can see you've got loads of different swatches in there so that's not a problem. So click on your live paint, select your colour, make sure you've selected the background first uh, and then you can basically fill in any of your sections. It might take a while because it's a big file so just let it take its time. Um, what you can do is always um, make the file a bit smaller but you can see that I've then coloured that in and I can. it will basically let me select any other sections that I want to fill in and I can keep going until the whole image is finished. For now I'm just going to leave it like that and let you see how this looks. So that is just a really quick way of showing you how you can turn your drawing into a vector image and colour it in on Adobe Illustrator.